Hello there, welcome to this video on the tutorial for section A of uh, Chopin's Adieu Waltz, Opus 69, number one in A flat. Uh, as always, uh, in the description box below are lots of goodies. The score, I've got a link to the first edition which I used, uh, and I also had a look at some others too, but the first edition is linked there. It's a free download. Uh, and uh, a couple of recordings. Also, each of these tutorial videos, because this piece is dissected into three videos, have a related article. So there are three articles, one for this video, one for the next two, but there's also a pre-study article, which you should read uh, before watching this tutorial, because it gives you some background stuff that I don't want to have to repeat in the video when you can just uh, read it. So do have a look at that. Uh, I'm going to give you a couple of techniques and ideas to master the piece at and away from the piano and uh, I'm simply going to assume that you've listened to it lots, you know the piece, you'd like to learn it and even if not you might take uh, some of the advice I give you and apply it to some repertoire that you do want to learn so there's no pressure on uh, having to learn the piece but it is enjoyable, Chopin has made it quite easy for us in, in for most of, the, most of the time it's very easy and uh, nothing too complicated so I hope you're going to enjoy this and by the end of it be able to play section A as always, like, comment, subscription to welcome. Have a look at my books, blog, podcast, and Patreon. Now, the melody primarily follows the notes of A flat. So I'm going to give you the right hand melody first, assuming that you have a score. And I've got mine. Uh, it's not open on my phone just yet, but if I need it, it's ready. And I'll pop it up to highlight a particular bar where I'd like to mention something for you to identify yourself. Um, so I'm going to assume you have the score and that you know how it goes. It's on your internal jukebox. The article I'm recommending that you read before you read the article related to this video, which dissects what I'm talking about just in a text form, uh, explains how I learned the piece and it asks you questions about a particular piece to make sure it's like a checklist, a three point checklist. I think you'll find it interesting and useful. So the melody uh, is completely in my mind. I've heard it many times. I've studied the score away from the piano and, uh, and there's a way to prove that you know the melody. And fortunately in this piece, the, the left hand accompaniment is very easy because it's just bass note and two notes everywhere, bass two, bass two, etc. And the melody is basically a one fingered melody for 95% of the whole piece, at least section A. And a good way to check that you really know it, apart from just playing it with the right hand and the natural fingering, is to play it with one finger on the left hand. And the same applies to the other, you know, in the other direction. Play the right hand notes sorry, play the left hand notes with the right hand. Just, uh, it just confirms that you really do know the notes and that you're not cheating, let's say. You're not doing it by muscle memory. That's mindless playing. I want you to get into the habit of mindful playing, not mindless playing, which means you are aware of what's going on. You're totally orientated in the keys and uh, you're looking ahead. And again, in the description box below, there's some useful videos for you in there uh, about these topics. So I'm going to play the melody for you, but I'm going to use one finger on my left hand apart from the very end of it, where I have to use uh, two when it, when it concludes like that. Uh, section one, section A, is divided into four quarters. Let's call them A1, A2, B1, B2. A2, B1 and B2 are a tiny bit different from each other. So A2 and B2 are a little bit different. A1 and B, B1 are a little bit different. If you keep that structure in your mind, it will help you learn the piece. So. A1 goes uh, like this, a, starting on E flat with a nice D out of key. There's also a B and an A out of key, but most of it's in the key of A flat. I'll play very slowly for you. And of course it's a waltz, so you're counting in one, two, three, one, two, three. Another A out of key there, very nice. nice leap up to the G and then a nice out of key note B very Chopin-esque to do that that's um, A1 then it's going to go uh, well that's it now I'll show you that what the chords are but I'm going to show you with the right hand you play them an octave well within the octave down from middle C so you'd start on the F but I'm going to show you with the right hand just to kind of prove my point that even I apply what I'm talking about. So I know the chord. So it's F, 
I'm not going to name the chords, it's not so interesting. I'm just going to tell you what the notes are. F, A flat, D flat, in the hope that you'll look at the score as well. F, A flat, D flat. E, G, C. Some editions hold down the bottom note. Some performers, I've heard, don't. Some play the pedal, some don't. So don't expect, a, there's no one way to play any Chopin piece, any, any piece of music. Even Chopin himself, according to a written account, uh, played his pieces differently every time he played them. Depends how he felt. As long as you're playing sort of 95% the melody and the, and the chords, then people know what song you're playing. And you can have a bit of freedom. Liszt said, be like a, a tree swaying in the wind. The roots are firm, the trunk is pretty solid, but the, the branches are just swaying a bit. You're allowed a bit of freedom. So, F, A flat, D flat, E, G, C, E flat with G flat and C, and then D with F and B flat. So I'll put those together properly, slowly, without any expression. We'll talk about all that stuff later, and all the uh, e expressivity. Of course, you can watch this back. Enjoy the timestamps in the description box below to jump to different parts of the piece. So that's that. Now the uh, left hand continues from that D, F, and B flat part to being D with a F and B flat. I'll do it in the right hand again to continue. It goes from D flat, F and B flat, and then it goes D with the same F and B flat once, and then you're moving, you're, you're keeping the D there, and you're playing F and B. There's a nice change. So from the D flat. So in the left hand. Uh, and then up to E flat. And then A flat and C, which is the A flat chord. A flat major triad, second inversion. Root, first inversion, second inversion. So I'll put that together and follow along, see how it goes. Practice yourself. I recommend a metronome to find your natural limit, not for performance practice, but because it's nice to know that, oh, I can play this at 100 beats per minute. The performance speed is recommended to be about 138 beats per minute. So if you can play it up to there, or even over that, 150, uh, that would be pretty impressive. That'd be nice. In your mind as well, away from the piano, just go through the melody notes with the metronome. You can just see the notes being played on your internal piano. Great skill to have. Uh, so, up. Oh, sorry, A flat there, sorry. That's where we've got to. And now the left hand goes down for one of the small variations on the left note, two note chord thing. It goes down to E flat. The melody note comes in just after, and you come up and you play E flat, B flat, and D flat. Do it in the right hand. <laughs> Does this, and then it goes to the E flat, G, and D flat. So like this. So in the left hand, the B flat moves to G, and the right hand goes up and goes to the G, F, E flat, D flat, and then a nice out of note Chopin note B, C. And then it ends on the A flat with, an, with that inversion, D flat, A flat, C, which is A flat major triad, second inversion. So. That's quite nice. So that's part uh, A1. Now you're going to go from the D flat, you're going to start immediately. I'll blend it with the left hand in a moment. You're going to go D flat, B flat, A flat, F, D flat. Again, down to the C. That's quite a nice. And you again follow the same chords. So it goes like this from the E flat. F. Sorry, D flat there. same chords in the left hand but 
there's a small change on the A2. So instead of going G and C, the left hand, like I said, Chopin's made it easy for us. So this time, the top topmost note of the left hand chord follows the melody. So it's nice. So here, both on the D flat down to the C. Now, if you look at the score, you know, you should know where we are, but I'll just uh, zoom in. It's bar, no, I need to count the bar. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 9, 10, 11, bar 12. It looks like this. And you think, oh goodness, that's lots of notes. How on earth can I do that in time? Again, Chopin has made it very easy for us. Uh, that is divided into three subsections, that bar. And each subsection begins on whatever the left hand is doing. So bass note, chord, chord. Uh, that's the beginning of each of the three subsections that the right hand is doing. So the first one involves five notes. So you need to play them a bit quickly. And it's going A, find your natural fingering, close your eyes. A, B flat, A, A flat, A. Now this, I, I've put a uh, link below in the description for terminology for all these fancy words that appear in lots of Chopin music. Uh, trills, turns, appoggiaturas, all those kinds of things. Uh, this is one of those. So that's part one with the E in the bass, E flat in the bass. That's beat one. Now the second subsection has three notes and starts on the C when you come up to play the G flat and the C. If the left hand is still doing the same chords, just with that tiny change, the, the D flat or C sharp to the C. And then E flat with the G flat, my F sharp, G flat doesn't work always, sorry about that. So that's the same. And then the next one will be, which was D flat, F and B flat, it's now going to go D flat, F and C once, which is the melody note as well. And then it's going to come to the B flat following the melody. They follow each other, which is nice. So thank you Chopin for that. So uh, going into that, um, we're going to go one, two, three, four, five. Uh, and then the next one, just three notes. And then again on that G flat. So you've got one, two, three. And then as an afterthought, I think this is a nice way to learn it, as an afterthought, touch the A. And if you look on the uh, sheet music, you'll see that uh, that A is right there. It's like a quick afterthought. Look at the note value. Quick afterthought. Because at the beginning of the next bar, you're playing it again as a grace note before you play the C onto the B flat. So, like that. So, uh, that's what we're doing. Um, so let's go into that. Uh, I'll go into it from the beginning, just from just so you can follow along. A1 into A2. Sharp in the left hand or D flat, a couple of herbs noted. Now, afterthought, and then left hand is following. Then you're going to go up again like you did last time, D, keeping the F and B flat. Same, up to the F and B this time with the D still down. Flat onto the A flat chord, A flat and C. I'll come into it again, and you can play back, of course. And then, then it closes. Uh, yes, and then it goes. Then you've got F and D flat, G and C, and A. So I'll go into that from the A2 beginning.
think to practice that, it might be nicer to play the part two and three first and then part one after. So instead of, so don't play, don't do that. Just start with the, that's quite nice, easier to do. And then just do the E flat with that five note thing. And then bring them together. <laughs> um, and then, uh, where are we now? Then. like the last time and then G with the D flat like last time F D flat in the right hand G and C and then A flats together and then it begins it ends with a with E flat and C there uh, I've heard some performers play the whole chord you're not going to be shot if you do it's just an A flat do the whole thing if you need to a bit of personalization maybe I would do that so that is a two so now we're going to go into uh, B1 and B2, which is everything we've just done with a, s a few changes. And that funny bit <laughs> becomes, <coughs> excuse me, becomes one level harder because it becomes chromatic. It's exactly the same thing from the A to the G flat and then back to the A as an afterthought, C to B flat, but you'll do it chromatically. Uh, but same thing. The, you start on the A with the E in the bass, E flat in the bass. When you land on the C, you play the chord. And when you land on the G flat, you play the chord. So it still follows the same thing. Look ahead, you'll see. So repeating, uh, I put my own little sort of touch on the beginning being a bit different, which I quite like. Don't have to do that. So the second time around, you just, you stop, you go. And then start again, B1. I go like that. I haven't seen that in a print anywhere. You should just go straight to the F, but I like that. Not too much, just an extra grace note. Same thing in the left hand as A2, following the right hand melody. And then this time, instead of it going, you're actually gonna go quicker. Uh, and again, you can see that marked on the uh, score here. I can't tell you the bar numbers because it doesn't have any, but you'll notice when it starts again, it looks like this. It's going... Uh, the wrong part. No, that is the right part. What am I talking about? So it's going to go A, A, I know you can't see it, but it's going A, B, flat, C, and then there's a grace note on the E flat. Like that, E flat, like that. So it's not going like it did last time, it's going... That's, so that's a little difference there, which is quite nice to, uh, to see. So, uh, everything's the same. Now it jumps up again, but I've heard some versions and I like it. Some editions have it written, some don't. I like it, but it's a bit of a handful, but I can't remember if I did it in my version at the beginning or not, but I like it. Instead of going, it's nice to put a, uh, a little turn here. So you're doing like that, a bit like, here, but you're doing it here. You have to do it quite quickly, like it's one note. And you have to get that jump perfect. So the jump is from the E flat index finger to the little finger on the G. And then all the rest of the notes are completely under the fingers. So it's very easy, the top bit, if you can land on the G. So that's uh, gonna go, I'll start, I'll start section B1. same and then here 
Now you can you, you start it on the beat or after the beat. It's your timing choice. I think after is good. So everything is the same. So maybe play around with that. It's quite nice. And then uh, part B2, and you go like this. Now this is another thing I've I heard, and I've only heard it in one recording. I like that. Some go. They like bounce. But I like to go like that. So I'm using my ring finger and little finger. It's a bit of a weak position, but it's okay. Same notes. And then that chromatic part. Now for me, I just use natural fingering, which is the same as it was earlier. Middle finger on the B flat, index on the A flat. And then using my uh, middle finger on the chromatic run up to the G flat. And then just continuing with the thumb on the A for the afterthought. Now that isn't too difficult. Find your natural limit, close your eyes, like I'm now. Nice, that, that reach is a very nice feeling. And then you... Um, and then it finishes. So I'll do that with the left hand. B1 and B2, and I'll do it slowly. Second time. <laughs> Look, left hand following the right hand. Following the hand again. Then. B2. chromatic part but it's exactly the same timing follow the hand follow the left hand follows the right hand again same now here sorry <laughs> playing E flat there here I like when some performers put the E, e natural here it's a very Chopin-esque thing to do to finish so I like that to go, uh, how can I get into that part? I think that's quite nice. Now I'll um, <clears throat> explain a few things to close the video. I'll just discuss a few performance uh, ideas for you. And the, and the main one with Chopin is to hesitate. That's what gives Chopin that kind of flavor that, that is so related to his style. And it's to not be so metronomic. You can only do this if you're not playing metronomically. So I am against metronomic playing, but it does help the metronome. It does help to just practice that you know the chords. Imagine just, the, like I said in the beginning, just having a click. It just confirms that you really uh, know the notes, you know? And if you hesitate or make a mistake, lower the speed. Find the natural limit where you can consciously do it and you know what's going on. Repeat it a few times, three, four, five times. Increase it by 10, success. Repeat it by 10, success. Getting it stronger and stronger and stronger until you don't need the metronome. So I think it's useful for finding your natural limit. Um, help you a lot, I hope. Um, so there's nice hesitations and also not overuse on the pedal. Uh, another one is to play um, little phrases suddenly a little bit quicker. Now on the score, it tells you, on the score, um, it can say, this one says like with, with animation, it's in Italian, con animazione, I forget what the word is. Just look, so I don't say anything silly. It, no, con espressione. So it's saying with expression. Now what does that mean? You know, <laughs> there's not, these Italian terms and markings, when it says, when it has dynamic markings, to be louder, to be softer, to slow down, with expression, um, what do they mean? It's very hard to put those into words. So it is down to interpretation. And if you listen to many versions of this piece, you'll hear, you know, every version is different. There's a nice teaching, well, a nice thought experiment, which is if a million people were asked to draw a circle, none of them would look the same. 
You know, you could scan them all with a computer and a million of circles would all look different, but they're all still circles. So you should see all this Chopin and classical music in that way. You're all playing the same piece. Everyone recognizes it. You're playing the right chords, the right melody, the same structure. There's just tiny differences and people interpret different words in different ways. So don't, don't get too held up on one version, one way, one edition. It's very rigid and it's not very nice. Um, so for example, if I just played the beginning in a very bland way, listen to the difference. So I did, the, I did part B there, didn't I? That's very dry. That sounds like a computer is playing it. But imagine if I just add a bit of emphasis. Now I can't put this into words, you just have to feel it. See how I hesitated already? I didn't just go, I went, I fell into it. Even here I hesitated in a different way. First time I played them equal, and I hesitated on the D flat. But that time, on the next time when I started to explain it, I hesitated on the E flat. And then I quickly played the D flat. So that you can, all these tiny differences are what makes it unique to you. And even that time I did a, see I'm doing this, I'm doing different things every time. And I'm only talking about three notes, not even three notes, one note really. I'm playing that E flat in so many different ways. That time I felt that I played it quietly. And got louder onto the D flat. I might do the opposite next time. I might play and play the D flat really quietly. So experiment with the dynamics of the, of, of the pieces. Bring them to life. It's, otherwise, you're going to do what I would relate to with an, with an analogy as it's like being an artist, but with paint by numbers. Here are the colors to use. Here are the lines. Here's the color code. Here's your one brush and pot of water, you know? And you just do it, and you just do it really dry. I'm saying, here's three more brushes. Here's 10 more colors. And I'm removing the color code. Just paint that scene. And everyone will paint trees green or, you know, brownie. Everyone will put the sky blue, but it will always be a different kind of brown, a different kind of green, a different kind of blue. <clears throat> Even though the picture is still kind of the same thing as everyone else. It's, it's personalized. It's those tiny differences which are important. So don't be afraid to express yourself. I'm just playing it very softly. And you notice how I did a little, I added an extra little passing tone, which I shouldn't do according to the scores, but people would enjoy that. To play around with it, that's really the main thing to say with this Chopin stuff. And again, I've put links in the description to uh, many useful study uh, sources and uh, which discuss Chopin, how to play Chopin, um, and my article. And these things uh, should help you. So I hope that you will have success with this and maybe share your progress in a comment below and uh, show other people that it can be done, even if you are a so-called beginner. Uh, the next video will be part two. And that's, of course, linked below and at the end of the video. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the uh, video and will enjoy the next two and the articles. So as always, good luck and likes, comments, subscriptions are always welcome. Have a look at my books, blog, podcast, Patreon, and I'll see you in part two. All the best and bye for now.